Welcome to this course and I think we should start this course with a demonstration because this uh, idea of this course is to actually show you uh, the working of IOT systems and how you design IOT systems right. So, let us start with the demo. What I have with me is a mobile phone which you know very well down one is a mobile phone and what you see on top is this Arate pop. If you go closer you will actually see Arate pop. This is an RFID reader. I know that you have no clue of what RFID is we will go uh, as we go along you will realize that, but uh, take it now that uh, this demo is a very interesting thing ok. So, this uh, is the reader and this is a mobile phone. Mobile phone all of us have used starting from a phone which is uh, no feature simple display systems having no sensors and so on up to very expensive phones we know the whole spectrum and on top what you see is this uh, uh, RFID reader. What I am going to do is I am going to start you know uh, start of uh, uh, putting this phone into action. What you see is a blank screen here right. So, now I will say read all right. So, I will press a button called read and you see it is starting to read now. You see some line here then there is one more tag here. So, I will read this tag ok and uh, two lines have appeared now then I will read one more tag ok. Okay, so, you see multiple reads have also come on the right side if you see uh, I suppose uh, it is not so visible, but I can tell you that one tag was read 10 times the other was read 16 and the other one was 17 and so on. So, the origins for IOT actually started from, uh, from this uh, whole experiment which I showed you and I am sure you are motivated to know more about uh, RFID its evolution as well as what are all the progress that uh, you have seen over the years. I sort of did not even talk about the phone I only mentioned a few sensors and so on. Remember this combination of RFID reader connected to this phone and this being an IOT smart device and this RFID reader can do wonders ok. By the way what I must also tell you is what I show you what I hold in my hand is exactly the same thing, but in a bigger size larger range uh, in terms of functionality no difference between what you see between the NHAI the uh, National Highway Authorities of India RFID systems which are deployed in uh, tall booths to what I hold in my hand ok. This is a miniaturized version of the same technology lower power shorter range right different uh, uh, lab based uh, tags that I am experimenting for the purpose of teaching you. But the professional ones that are applied are packaged better have a different uh, radiation pattern perhaps which will allow you to uh, scan the automobiles as they are passing through a toll booth. So, it is exactly the same thing there is a name to this uh, technology in the RFID world and we will come to that as we uh, go along. So, let us now go and look up the uh, thing related to how this name was coined. So, who coined this name uh, internet of things and how did it all evolve that is the question right it may have uh, bothered you on that. So, actually uh, this name was coined by this gentleman here I would like to show you his name is Kevin Ashton ok. You see this is the person and this is a, you in fact download this article and read it for yourself. I will just tell you what uh, it actually meant it what his his definition of uh, the term IOT which is written here you can see that he mentions the uh, name IOT here is what did it mean then and is the definition still valid ok. I think the opening line is fantastic it simply says it meant using the internet to empower computers to sense the world for themselves amazing right you are not getting humans anywhere in the picture it is not at all about humans who generates traffic machines generate traffic who consumes the traffic machines consumed traffic it is so different from what we know very well you sit in front of a computer kick up your browser you type google or you type uh, gmail or you type any of your email or go to youtube or facebook or whatever it is the human which is actually triggering things not anymore IOT does not say that IOT says it is something that will empower computers to sense the world for themselves 
what is the ambient around me, what should I do, should I not get data from the other sensors and should my action not be dependent on what is happening around me. Very simple uh, uh, way by which how powerful this concept of IoT has become. What does it mean? Think about your house and you have let us say a lot of automation in your house. It is um, basically very very hot or sunny outside not hot it is sunny outside and you want your window shades to come down. One option is you get up from your seat you press a button the window shades come down. Another option is you put a sensor which is looking at the light outside. The light outside is sensed and uh, the sensor says I am giving you this light output and it look appears to be of some intensity. Another sensor says oh the intensity of this light is high. So, I must perhaps bring down the, the blind all by myself. So, the other computer now brings down the blind all by itself. So, what have you done? No human interaction is required. These are simple examples, but think about what all you can do when one machine is talking to another machine. Okay? So, you build like this and then this uh, machine now uh, says okay, I am going to get it down. Next you can complicate it. You can say here is this guy who is sitting inside the house, he likes not full darkness, he likes a certain amount of light, he, he, he knows he likes a certain amount of light. So, this machine uh, did a dumb thing, what it did was moment the light was very high which was given by the light sensor, the other machine went and closed the blind, the room became dark, the human sitting inside said hey this is annoying it is too dark for me let me go and press the button again. So, he presses the button and adjusts it, moment it adjusts certain amount of light comes in. Now, the ambient is good for him he says ah great this is the right amount of lighting that I like. Now, for that amount of lighting this computer which closed the blind says this is the level at which the human is happy the amount of light that he wants it looks like Prabhakar is happy with this amount of light inside the room. He tells the sensor hey you are now looking outside why do not you twist inside come inside rotate yourself inside and then tell me what is the light inside. So, the sensor maybe has a motor or something or there can be two sensors right there is one looking out there can be one sensor looking in the look, sensor that is looking in or the sensor which rotated itself looks up and says this is the value I wish to report to you. Now, this blind sensor blind computer blind controlling computer now says Prabhakar is requires this threshold. So, let me adjust the blind. So, the next time around something happens the uh, blind computer the blind controlling computer the, the, uh, the light controlling computer or the uh, blind which is uh, turning the blinds on for the window knows very well what is the comfort level of the human. Folks you can think of any number of products out there in the market this is the essence. You take the thermostat application from nest it is doing exactly this, but this is for other thermal comfort that is for keeping your room cool. I gave you an example of light you can come you can now take it for thermal comfort inside the homes learning is important the blind the, the computer associated with the blind actually learnt what is it that I am comfortable and adjusted it to yourself. This is the power of IOT and this is the single line that Kevin Ashton said in a very cryptic manner and so let us move on to most important thing that I wanted to uh, show you is the formal definition of IOT. This is the formal definition of IoT folks I could not find a better definition than this. A global infrastructure for the information society enabling advanced services by interconnecting physical and virtual things based on existing and evolving interoperable information and communication technologies. So, what we discussed about uh, computers blind and so on and so forth are all about uh, computers which are connected to those uh, systems. You can also talk about virtual connecting to virtual systems. What could be a good example? Think about the following folks you are in front of a, your laptop and, uh, and you uh, there was a chair there was a table and there was a laptop kept in front of you and then you 
came in from somewhere and sat in front of your desk uh, in your chair in front of your desk and opened the laptop. Moment the laptop opened the computer already knows that you are reading page 136 of some book and it goes directly and opens that page for you. Where is that physical page? No, it is a virtual page. Okay, It opens a virtual page for you and then moment you finish reading it might even swipe through the next go to the next page and next page and so on. So, you can have physical systems talking to virtual systems Okay, and uh, these are so you can connect the physical world to the virtual world. You people today talk about digital twins, digital twin is an exact digital copy of the physical system. Think about a solenoid valve, a solenoid valve that you see is physical. Supposing I have a copy of this solenoid valve both in terms of its physics model as well as the data that it generates and I fuse the physics model and the data from it. I now have a digital copy of that solenoid valve. Every time the valve opens closes I get data here corresponding to open close which means I am sensing and communicating this data to this virtual, uh, virtual object. And now I can do a lot about working on this virtual object itself. I can perhaps find out how it deteriorates um, over time because of these operations because I understand that in the in the in the digital world I can do any kind of destructive activity out there uh, which will not really influence anything that is physically running. So, all your experimentation all your future predictions all your future uh, uh, operations that you want to do on can happen on the digital copy. So, people are talking about the community talks about digital twins and uh, having virtual copies of the physical object uh, is a lot more beneficial. We if time permits we will spend time on how to build these digital twins, but I do not envisage that, but please do look up you will get a wealth of information about how these digital copies uh, can interact with the physical objects uh, vice and vice versa. Okay. So, this is an important thing you should have a bi-directional transfer of uh, data between the physical and the virtual objects. So, that is essentially what is uh, what this definition is. Now, if you look at the uh, evolution of uh, RFID of this uh, whole IOT evolution on the x axis is uh, the timeline on the y axis is the technology. Okay. So, look at what uh, the very first bullet is and that is very nice to see that we already know a little bit about RFID. Okay. RFID tags for uh, facilitating uh, routing, inventorying and loss prevention everything can be done. See if you have a reader in front of the system which is all the time um, you know inventorying the tags, reading the tags, reading the tag is equivalent to inventorying the tags. Okay. So, if you are inventorying it moment an item is removed from that uh, rack or removed from there the reader can quickly report and say hey I do not see this item anymore. Maybe a customer has picked it from a shelf from a smart shelf call it a smart shelf is a shelf which has an RFID reader. Uh, which is attached to it and then the item was removed. So, you could essentially uh, track systems in quick real time uh, in, in real time and that is essentially what he is saying. This is all happened in the uh, um, in the world of uh, ex uh, demand for expedited uh, logistics. Now, the second uh, as you go along in the 2010 kind of uh, time frame surveillance, security, healthcare, transport, food uh, safety, document management these started become uh, becoming very very important. Uh, we do know about camera systems which are there in large cities which are looking at uh, intersections which are looking at traffic management which are looking at uh, traffic intensity in busy junctions looking at how to plan traffic uh, to ease traffic in these uh, congested cities mm -hmm. all of that is possible because IOT sensors are out there a camera sensor is a fantastic IOT sensor gives you wealth of information about the amount of traffic the amount of pollution from air quality sensors will tell you that which are polluted areas which are uh, good for safe and which are the areas you should avoid so on and so forth. So, so many things are happening and all that happens uh, in the in the time care even healthcare, right. Healthcare personalized healthcare and public healthcare have got revolutionized because of uh, the uh, fact that IOT was able to get applied there as well. So, as you go on the y axis you will see that demand for expedited logistics cost reduction leading to diffusion in into second wave of applications then ability of devices located uh, indoors to receive geological uh, signals 
miniaturization of uh, power efficient electronics, software agents and advanced uh, sensor fusion. All these things are happening along the y axis and uh, the y and the x are moving together because you will see that it is like a line which is at 45 degrees. You will see that uh, the 2020 I mentioned to you the most important thing that you can think of is locating people and everyday objects and we must look at uh, that also in some detail. Then came all this issue of uh, COVID-19 and doctors and hospitals and so on and so forth where you want to have physical distancing and you want to maintain physical distancing. Uh, important surgeries have to continue but doctors can get infected. So, how do you ensure that uh, these things are actually enabled? Well, the evolution the era has come now where teleoperation has become a big thing. You will think about a doctor sitting wherever he or she is performing a remote surgery on the other side. A whole connection is IOT enabled lot of sensors on the robotic arm side which is performing the surgery for instance, which is giving tactile feedback to humans and humans uh, are who are essentially doctors are getting feedback. Maybe they wear a glove and that glove will essentially have a feedback mechanism coming from the remote side via the, the robo which is on the other side via a internet. And once that uh, feedback comes the doctor knows what to do next. Now, this say the opposite is also true is not in fact, the uh, it all starts with the doctor performing a operation a type of a uh, procedure. Let us say he is doing a, a suturing procedure or he is doing a uh, surgical procedure or something that action has to be translated to the remote side and the robot has to actually do the uh, surgical operation has to perform the surgical operation and give feedback in real time. All this means tactile cyber physical systems have invaded us, it is the reality. Again IOT comes in a big way because there are a lot of sensors, there is a lot of sensing and actuation happening in real time and uh, CPS systems essentially are, uh, are uh, full blown where IOT plays an important role in this uh, the evolution of uh, IOT. Now let us shift to the uh, I mentioned to you about the RFID systems and uh, I mentioned that if time permits I mean if we know, know a little more about RFID you will actually know this part of the bullet which is down below here right this this part of the bullet is known to you. You can uh, look at RFID. So, let us spend a little more time connecting all the dots that we mentioned here. Thank you very much.